Hello, I'm with uh, Lizzie Aldrich here in La Valeta, in Malta. Uh, you can see a memorial for uh, Daphne Caruana Galizia. Uh, today, uh, inquiry has started. Can yeah. you tell us uh, what is happening right now with this uh, issue? Well, the public inquiry, the independent public inquiry, was um, demanded by the Council of Europe back in June. And the government had until, I think it was the 26th of September was the deadline, somewhere around then. And throughout the period, the government either said nothing or they said, we're going to um, consult independent legal advice. Six days before the, the deadline, when they had to announce public inquiry, the government announced it. But the three people they, cho they had chosen were not independent by any means whatsoever, not by any means. So Peter Omzikt and the Council of Europe said no. Then the, another panel was put together. One of the original people remained. Uh, the family was happy with that, which was really important. And then on the back of arrests having been made of information coming out that the prime minister is um, incriminated in the assassination, his right-hand man is the main suspect in terms of commissioning the assassination. Jürgen Fennec, who's owner of 17 Black, has now been charged with commissioning the assassination. The middleman, Melvin Toma, has been coming out with stuff which is all about, you know, Castile, the government, their involvement, their, their absolutely unequivocal involvement in the assassination. All of the things that we as activists and journalists and critics of the government knew. But it's now all coming out. So today, the timing is, it, it, it is strange because in the middle of all this kind of horror that's been going on in Malta, specifically in the past couple of weeks, the independent public inquiry began and Matthew, Daphne's oldest son, um, gave a very moving, very detailed, very thorough testimony, which just says, this, you know, the, the public inquiry is to decide whether or not things could have been done to prevent the assassination. And I think it's pretty clear at this point and has been for ages, that the state is, is involved. The European Union sent some delegators and a delegation of yeah. people. What do you think is going to is, is going to make any change? Or? Well, the, as you say, the MEPs came. They arrived, I think, I'm forgetting the days of the week at the minute. Uh, I think they arrived on Tuesday. They, they were shocked, outraged, appalled at the situation here. Some of them have been before, Sven Giegold, Roberta Metzler, who is a Maltese MEP, and some of the MEPs were new. They have said, Joseph Muscat must resign. I mean, he has not resigned. Yeah. Resigning is not, I'll resign, but I'll leave it 40 days now, I think it is. So they said he must resign. They've, they've talked about, you know, the, the appalling situation where, where the prime minister, who has not resigned, is in... It has control over the murder investigation in which his right-hand man has been fingered as the main uh, as the main suspect, the main culprit. It's a bit crazy because uh, Daphne Caruana Galizia was murdered uh, two, two years ago. Over two years. Over two years ago. And until now, nothing has happened. Well, that's the whole problem. And Matthew Caruana Galizia spoke about this at length this morning at the beginning of the independent public inquiry. I mean, the, the Malta police have not only done nothing, but there have been obstacles placed in the way. Um, I mean, as we speak, Keith Shikembri, the Prime Minister's right-hand man, who resigned and then was then arrested and then released two days later, a week yesterday, he was released without any reason by the police because we have no further need to question him. After we had been listening to information being given in the courts by either Jorgen Fennec or Melvin Toma, I can't remember who exactly, talking about his his role in, in the whole plot. And then he was suddenly released on that Thursday with no reason. And he is walking around as we speak, a free man in Malta. And yet we know about his part, we know about his role, we've heard it. It's, it's absurd. And finally, Lizzie, how, is, how are people reacting over this? Do you have any event plan? There's people protesting? We have been protesting non-stop over the past couple of weeks since the arrest, in particular of Jorgen Fennec, because he's the owner of 17 Black. We knew this over a year ago. Nothing happened. <laughs> Nothing happened. It's taken over a year for Jorgen Fennec to be arrested. 
uh, that's Malta. Um, so we've been protesting pretty much every day. Parliament was illegally suspended. It was just suspended the other day when the opposition party, such as they are, were not even there. Mm -hmm. So the party that's in control, which is pretty much mafia, decided to suspend Parliament, having put up barricades to try and prevent us protesting. So our next major protest is taking place on Sunday at 4 p.m. here. And we've got support of lots of NGOs in Malta. And having been, I'm part of Occupy Justice, a woman-led pressure group which has been going, started in, in, almost as soon as the assassination occurred. We were very small. The people who protested against this government, we were a minority and we were harassed and we were threatened and we were described as traitors and prostitutes. Now the situation has got to such a critical point, I mean it's so clearly obvious that the government is involved, mm -hmm. that many, many, many more people are now joining us. Last Sunday we had a massive demonstration here in Valletta, we had 20,000 people there. So now I think people have just got to the point where it's clear, it's obvious, things that have been obvious to to activists and critics and journalists before are now obvious to pretty much everybody except the die-hard supporters of this crazy government. Thank you very much, Lester. This is, of course, a big test for democracy and a big test for free journalism, independent journalism. So we wish you all the best and we hope this uh, memorial isn't removed overnight by Owen Benici, the Minister for Justice and Culture. Yeah. He removes it every night, oh, orders yeah. of the government. Today it transpired that Owen Benici was paying €5,000 per month to a guy called Brian Tonner. Brian Tonner is the Prime Minister's accountant for the, a company called Nexia BT, who set up the Panama accounts for the Prime Minister's right-hand man, Keisha Kembry, who's the main suspect in the assassination, and Conrad Mitzi, who was the Minister for Tourism, but resigned, but is still carrying out his ministerial duties. That's what we discovered about Owen Benici today. Not that we ever thought he was clean, but hey. There has to be uh, justice. There has to be, there has to be justice, there has and there will be. Justice. Every day I think we're getting closer. And there has to be full transparency. And these guys have to go to jail. Thank you very much, Felicity, for Thank your you. time and your explanations. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.